Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Those of you who have been with my channel for a while will know that um, there is a conspicuous absence of carriers. That has a very good reason. I am a pretty terrible carrier player. <laughs> so, I think the only review I've ever done of a carrier was of the Glaf Zeppelin, because a lot of people have been asking, and I figured, ah, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. And honestly, I don't think I've played this ship much since then. I really am not very good at playing carriers. <laughs> so, I figured we're getting close to... We're getting close to 500 viewers and people keep repeatedly asking me in the comments, Terry, what do we do with carriers? How do we play carriers? And my usual answer would be, I am utterly terrible at playing them. I'm probably not a very good person to uh, to help you here. Uh, maybe check out um, yeah Boy's channel. He's got some good carrier videos, for example. But, you know, you can't, can't be having with that. Kind of, kind of public service is that here. Uh, people expect more, so I figured it's time to get good. And we're starting with the Langley, the tier 4 carrier. So this thing will kind of double up as a triple up, as a review, get good, and tier 4 tips and tricks. So I'm probably going to throw it into all three. Because this is tier 4 and this is the Langley. The Langley was the very first American aircraft carrier. Built in, I think, 1920, uh, the Americans decided that, well, since the British have been doing this for a while, they want to have an aircraft carrier as well. So they took a coal freighter, more or less, and stuck a flight deck on top of it. And uh, as you can see, that's exactly what this thing looks like. There's a freighter underneath, and then somebody put a couple of struts and a flat top, and we're done, we have a carrier. She did serve in the Second World War, but she was more of a, um, I think she was more of a, an aircraft tender at the time, so she was ferrying aircraft from one place to another, rather than an actual combat duty carrier. And she was, she was in the Pacific, she was actually sailing from Australia, shipping some, some planes, when she got ambushed by, uh, in, in, in her convoy, got ambushed by a group of uh, Japanese planes and they dropped, they attacked with level bombers and eventually, well, that did end up with a couple of hits and that's all it took. So she had to be abandoned and was scuttled by, by the crew. But um, yes, the very first aircraft carrier. It, it, it's actually that much of a first aircraft carrier that it had carrier pigeons on it. Now, they're not called carrier pigeons because they're on a carrier. No, they're called carrier pigeons because they are the kind of, you know, uh, messaging system, pre-anything usable, where you stuck a little piece of paper onto the leg of the pigeon and, and sent it out to fly back home, hoping that it would deliver the message. So they actually had a, pitch, a pigeon coop on this thing. Um, I don't think they used it much, and they very quickly dropped that idea, but initially they had a set of pigeons on this carrier. <laughs> That's how long ago that was. Anyway, in the game, the Langley, built in oh, 1922, okay, I was relatively close, we have 16,000 hit points and pretty much destroyer armor, I would say. So, you don't have much hit points and you have nothing to protect them with. Again, this is a cargo ship <laughs> with, a, with, a very, with a landing strip on top of it. They haven't had the the idea with the islands and everything yet either. It's all underneath it. The maximum speed is um, a whopping 15 knots, or 15 and a half, really, which is perfectly acceptable for a cargo ship. But um, American battleships from that period are faster. And if you're in something and then you see American battleships zooming by, you know that you are not moving very quickly at all. So, speed is not one of the things that this this uh, this machine has. Now, it can move, though. A lot of people forget that, that it actually is a capable of moving from one point to another. It is a ship, after all. And we'll get to that in a minute. It has guns. Uh, four of them. Two on each side. There are destroyer guns, 127mm. And you're going to be like, yeah, and you wonder, what, am I, what are you going to do with, with these things? Well, I have... 
on the rare occasion, actually sunk something with these guys. <laughs> but again, we'll get to that in a minute and we'll see what, um, what I'm talking about. But yes, the standard destroyer guns, um, in a pitched effort, they can be actually quite useful. Because again, you're in tier 4. Now, to the main armament. We have two carrier groups. We have two squadrons of dive bombers. So we don't get any torpedo bombers on this thing. We get the BM-2, and I think that's a Martin BM-2. Uh, one of the first carrier, or maybe even the first carrier um, carrier plane developed for, well, the American Navy. It was a biplane. Can we kind of see that here? Let me get a bit closer. Yeah, there we go. There, you can see it nicely there. Yeah, so these are biplanes, and they drop bombs. You get, well, two squads of four each. They are not extremely accurate. That let that be said, but they um, so they do a decent amount of damage with fourteen hundred, and so basically battleship damage, really a bit more than a battleship shell. So if you sum that up, you'd say you'd have an you basically have an eight gun battleship with no health, no armor. Uh, slow, sl slower than a South Carolina, uh, and uh, depending on how far away you are, with a really, really lo long reload. But uh, they, they are, if they hit, they can actually do a decent amount of damage. Now, bombs generally have a tendency to set fires, so we're talking about really big high explosive shells here, more or less. So we're not getting bounces, we're not getting, getting overpens, we're getting full or semi pens and a 35% chance of actually setting fires. The anti aircraft armament is, well, existing. But now we're actually, you know, seeing this from the other side. So if our dive bombers have 1300 hit points and our AA damage is 40, um, yeah, we're not going to shoot anything down with this thing, are we? No, we're not. The surface detection is relatively good. So these things are on the sneaky side, and they have to be, because if you get spotted in one of these things, first of all, everybody likes shooting at a carrier, because they give a lot of score, and you can't really run away, <laughs> because, because you, you, be, you, you, you will be outrun by a South Carolina. <laughs> so uh, running away is not an option. So hiding is what we're doing with this. Now... The uh, elite bonus, you could give it a bit more hit points, but really what you want here is the preparation time. Because the, the lower the preparation time, the, the less time it takes to get the planes ready again, rearmed and and polished and, and refueled and everything, uh, before you, they can, you can send them out again. So it's, it's, um, it's a reload mod, more or less, seeing it, seeing it that way. So... Which brings us to the equipment. Well, um, we're spoiled for choice here. We can put exactly one module in here, <laughs> which increases the dive bomber capacity and reduces the torpedo bomber capacity, which is awesome because we don't have any torpedo bombers. So <laughs> bring it on. Um, I have put the damage control system mod in here because yes, while you can do any of the other things, you're mostly not really going to be sailing around in your carrier very much because if you're being spotted out in the open, you are very, very dead. So this is more for the cases when the other carrier, the enemy carrier, decides that, hey, I'd, uh, I'd like to drop everything I have on you because um, who cares about all these ships in the middle? I'm going to go for you. And the same story with uh, the, the third slot. I've got the torpedo defense mod in here which gives us a, gives us a slightly slight increase in torpedo damage reduction again this is not against destroyer torpedoes because if you get a destroyer anywhere near you you are dead this is against enemy carrier torpedoes because enemy players in at least at this tier and again i'm relatively new to this have a, a disturbing tendency to try to carry a snipe me which um, is irritating and not necessarily doing their own team a favor but Anyway, it does happen. So um, beefing up these defenses, uh, as much as these terms are uh, able to be used, is a good thing. Now, supplies. I, usually I don't really put supplies in Tier 4. Uh, I, I, don't see, I don't see the use of that or that. For 
because not, nothing you're in tier four which means you get tier three four and five enemy ships nothing has any aa which is understandable because historically at the time nobody actually had to deal with carriers because well they were kind of not invented yet or at least not really uh, hadn't really proven themselves in battle. It wasn't until a lot later that uh, people figured out that, oh yes, all those fancy battleships there, if you drop bombs and torpedoes on them, they go down actually rather quickly. And carriers are awesome. Nobody knew that yet at the time. So nobody put any anti-air on their ships, or not much at least, more like a token sort of thing. So um, yeah, no one's gonna hit your, no one's gonna shoot down your planes, ever. You can, in this tier, you can completely freely move across the whole enemy fleet through all the anti-air of whatever it is, and no one's gonna hurt you. So the only thing I've actually fitted in here is the refined fuel to make my dive bombers a little bit faster. Which, again, is a good thing because, well, you do have to fly a bit. My commander is brand new, because I, I had plenty of American commanders laying around anyway, and uh, there is a relatively important skill at the first tier, where you do not want the underwater protection for a change, but you actually want the 8% return speed. That is really, really useful, because make, this makes your planes come back almost 10% faster, which means you get them back quicker, get them rearmed and refueled, and get them back out there again quicker. So this is good. Uh, nothing useful in the second slot, really. So I've got the torpedo alert, whatever good it does me. I have uh, the high alert in uh, slot 3, or tier 3, because, yeah, preheating makes a lot of sense. And uh, I am not really using my guns, so that doesn't make any sense either. None of the American carriers has a defensive AA, apparently, so I've just stuck the victorious charge in here. Uh, there are a couple more carrier-specific things coming in higher tiers, like, uh, like this one for making your fighters fight better. But... Uh, and this one here, which makes your dive bombers better. But that's ways, ways, ways out there. So let's not even worry about that yet. All right. So let's uh, take our carrier pigeon carrier into battle. Okay. It's, uh, been, it's been a little difficult to actually find a match at this time because the matchmaker actually makes sure that there are, this, there are sim same tier carriers on each team player carriers, otherwise you'll just play against bots. So, playing Arena, so, um, we're going to be in battle very, very early. So what I'm going to do at the beginning is I'm going to speed up my ship for whatever that's worth, and then I'm going to send my planes out. Now, you can use, you can use your planes for, um, for scouting to find out where the enemy team is or you can start um, targeting particular players. So uh, let's go after that Imperator Nikolai over there. And um, while our planes are busy dropping, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of uh, park myself behind this island here and uh, make sure that I'm, out of, that I'm out of vision of everybody. And, I'm not, uh, and hopefully use it as a little bit of a of a cover. So my plane should be almost up again. Now when you're in the when you're when you're steering your plane, you cannot you cannot obviously steer your where's the Nikolai? There's the Nikolai. And oh the the Itzias love might have him already. So yeah the Nikolai's probably dead. Okay, so let's go for let's go for the Phoenix. Yep, the she's dead because he's on our, on our other flank. So, when you're not currently busy um, flying your planes, you actually have to... There we go, that's another fire. You actually um, have to steer your ship. And I can thoroughly recommend that, that you're finding yourself an island to park yourself behind. Okay, that phoenix is burning, burning merrily. Uh, and he's under fire by the Wyoming, so let's help out the Wyoming, because there's a Kaiser pushing through here. Now we have a very good overview, and we can obviously target any kind of ship that uh, any kind of ship that that we want. And the closer the ship is, the the quicker we're going to be in getting our planes back. Now the Kaiser damage controls, and there comes the second wave. Now hopefully we're getting another fire. Of course we don't, but 
that would have been nice because that would have been a permafire. So we're just kind of helping out at this point here. And um, it looks like the, the Kaiser is retreating outside the cap circle. So I'm going to send my two uh, dive bombers out and then I'm actually going to push ahead because uh, shortening the distance shortening the distance between me and my target means I can get the air, the planes out quicker and I can do damage more quickly as if I have to fly a long way across it's um, not necessarily the most efficient way of, of, of my time okay the Kaiser is dead as well so at this point we only have one destroyer and the carrier which means I can get into the cup circle and um, start uh, pushing out against the enemy carrier. Where is he over? You can see where the planes are going because the returning planes are going to go to the carrier. So that's pretty much where he is. And I'm going to send the other one. There's the enemy Langley. Okay. He's already being spotted. Now there's a destroyer around here somewhere. And I'm spotted, so that's the destroyer. So once my dive bombers are coming back, I'm going to have to deal with that Clemson over there. Now, and while they're doing that, I'm just going to use the island as much as possible for cover. And I'm going to use my guns, actually. Let's open fire at him, because my guns are surprisingly effective against this thing. We do set fires. Now we've won this game. So if, if I die or not, doesn't make a difference here. So planes out. Second plane out. And as much as possible, try to avoid these torpedoes. Yep. So you'll be. Uh, it's it's relatively hard to. Uh, we don't have much health. Much health at all. So it's relatively hard to um, to do both things at the same time, but you, and for the planes to actually hit anything. But um, you can leave your you can leave your, your steering at a position where you can actually and these platforms are completely missing. I'm probably going to be dead unless I can dodge and. Oh, almost got him! <laughs> Yay, we survived! So, if you're in a carrier, don't just sit there. Uh, actually get moving and um, make sure that uh, that you find yourself some cover and that you, you, you watch out your surroundings. Now, one mistake I just made, and again, I will be early, I, I thought, given that the Clemson was right next to the rest of our team, that they would take care of him and I could chase down the other carrier. Of course, the rest of my team decided, oh no, that Clemson, who cares about him? There's a carrier up for grabs. Let's go for the carrier. <laughs> so I had to dogfight a Clemson in my Langley. But uh, it worked. And I almost got him. I would have gunned him down if the Kaiser hadn't beaten me to it. Uh, so in terms of damage, you're not going to do huge amounts of damage. Usually I do about 25, 30,000, maybe 35,000 points of damage. Um, most a lot of you you can get you can rack up some damage with the fires so you see i've got a really good fire um, set of fires going here the idea generally is to hit them once cause a fire wait for them to extinguish and then hit them again <laughs> and then just let them burn because you don't have torpedo bombers you you can't actually flood them at the same time but um it's a it's a good way of doing this now in this top down view you have a good overview of where the battle is, what's happening in the battle, where the battle is going, and you you can if if it um, if it if push comes to shove, then you well if you're still in a ship, you can still steer, you still got guns, you can use them. The, I, I generally tend, at least in in this Langley here in tier four, I tend not to hang back too much and kind of um, squeeze myself into the corner of the map just because. It, it takes too long. It takes too long for the um, for the planes to get where they're supposed to go and come back again for me to actually have any impact on the battle. I usually prefer to find myself an island to hide behind behind, 
Uh, she has a good uh, surface, a relatively good surface detection concealment. It's not that easy to spot, and um, you shorten the range. You sh you increase the number of uh, bomb drops you can get. I generally tend to go for bigger targets because these bombers are woefully inaccurate, as you've seen against the Clemson. I think I've dropped him like three, four times and haven't hit any anything really. So, yeah, it's fun. It is surprisingly fun to play aircraft carrier. Now, on the whole topic of carrier sniping, so if you, you could go and try to sink the other aircraft carrier straight up from the battle, because you're in tier 4, you're in tier 5, no one has any anti-air to speak of, no one can actually hurt your planes in a significant way, and um, the enemy carrier doesn't have much health. So you can usually get that done in probably 3 to 4 strike waves. I generally don't do that, because it feels, if you can get it done, there's usually about two minutes in the battle left, and all you've ever, all you've going to have done in the battle is take out the enemy carrier. So if someone does that to me, what I usually do is ignore it, try to tank as much as possible, and uh, be grateful, because that means the rest of my team isn't under air attack, and can hopefully clean up, and I'll help out as much as I can with spotting and uh, dropping ships that are in need of being dropped. So. Yeah, this, keep these things in mind. Move your carrier to a safe position as much as possible. Um, keep, keep an eye on your surroundings. If push comes to shove, you can always fire up the engines and get moving. Um, look, for ships that, look for ships that you can that you need to take out because they are on low health. Maybe ships that have been retreating to recover some of their health and uh, gotten a safe away to a safe distance and, and you can chase them down. Uh, concentrate your fire. Try to take ships out early if you can. And generally, with at least with this ship, I tend to drop things that are somewhat larger, <laughs> because hitting destroyers with dive bombers is actually surprisingly difficult. Now, you don't really have to mind your, your planes. You tell them once where to go, and then they go there, and then they come back again. But um, with torpedo planes, it's a different story, but uh, she doesn't have any, so we don't have to worry about it yet. Anyway, uh, that that's me. With carriers, uh, aggressive carrier gameplay, tier four. <laughs> so, I will occasionally do some more carrier plays as I keep learning how to how to play these things effectively and um, how to have fun in them, really, because that's what it all comes down to. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.